In this video, we will continue our introduction to the model of human evolution known as spiral dynamics. We will cover what you can expect towards the top of the spiral, and the methods of ascending the spiral so you can practically develop yourself in a constructive manner. Please go back and watch the previous video on spiral dynamics before we start because it will give you vital context for this video. Please also like and subscribe if you'd like because it helps the channel grow and reach more people like you. Now as we move up the spiral even further we transition from tier 1 to tier 2. This is very significant because it signifies the individual or group beginning to become aware of the lower stages of the spiral. Tier 1 was generally characterised by self-righteousness that one's worldview was the only correct one. But now as we evolve into tier 2, we see the lower tiers as a necessary system of step-by-step -step development so that the individual or group could survive more efficiently in their environment. Tier 2 is moving away from survival needs, which was characterised by tier 1, and into being, which can be thought of as not being compulsively driven by one's survival instincts, and instead doing things for the implicit pleasure in growth, play, and merely being. You can also think of this as being less driven by ego-based needs, and more free to explore reality in an objective manner. Remember, as we move up each stage in the spiral, we alternate between being more individually centred to more community centred. You can also think of this as being more left-brained or right-brained respectively. How do you ascend to tier 2? To ascend to the second tier, one must cultivate a high degree of authentic self-acceptance. One must begin to notice the limits of first tier thinking, and develop enough knowledge and understanding to begin to see the power of viewing the world as interconnected holistic systems as in the second tier. Claire Graves, one of the founders of this model, described the transition from tier 1 to tier 2 to be a momentous leap. For some this may involve a deeply painful personal event that shakes their entire worldview, such as the death of a loved one, a personal betrayal, a devastating illness, deep depression or bankruptcy. There are more proactive and positive methods to evolve to tier 2, such as being exposed to new worldviews through travelling or reading, or practices like meditation to increase one's awareness. Before I move on, it should be noted that those in tier 1 have a tendency to place themselves in tier 2 because their ego wants to claim they're higher than they actually are. This is a natural impulse, so one should take the time to try to objectively find where they are on the spiral. Also. One is never completely in one stage, but often overlaps into two or three stages. However, in general, their worldview resonates with one of the stages more than the others, and this should be taken as your stage. Tier 2 Stages There are only a couple of stages in the second tier that are worth talking about, because they get so advanced so quickly. First up we have yellow. I consider myself as a solid yellow individual that occasionally drops to lower stages and occasionally ascends to the stage above. As you transition to yellow, you begin to think of the world in a bird's eye perspective, in which no one person is right or wrong. Remember, because green was a communalistic stage, yellow is now an individualistic stage. Yellow is highly interested in ideas and models of reality. Yellow sees things as interacting as complex systems, and generally sees the world in a big picture systems thinking manner, in which more and more connections emerge in yellow's awareness. Yellow moves freely between different value systems i.e. tiers of the spiral, since it's in tier 2. Here's a list of the general characteristics of yellow which will hopefully provide you with more context. Yellow moves freely between different value systems, i.e. tiers of the spiral. Yellow fuses head and heart. Yellow is hyper-efficient with its actions. Yellow views the world in terms of evolutionary streams and integrative structures. Yellow highly values personal freedom. Yellow values creating spaces where consciousness development can take place more easily. Yellow has a set of inner values that it acts from. Yellow views life as chaotic and changing, in which insecurity is an acceptable way of being. Yellow is always seeking to learn and develop oneself. Yellow is only present in approximately 1% of the world's population. And the last stage we will consider is turquoise. This stage I don't have much experience of, but I can still talk about its characteristics here. 
you remember, yellow was an individualistic stage, so this stage is communalistic. This stage is even more interconnected than yellow, such that the world is now viewed as a holistic grid of interdependent units. Turquoise emerges to expand on yellow's more myopic systems thinking, to unify body, mind and soul in one overarching holistic framework. And here is a list of the general characteristics of turquoise. Turquoise sees how all forms and forces of life work together in harmony. Turquoise accepts things for how they are and in doing so is at peace. Turquoise has a collective consciousness whereby the global view is equally as important as the local view. Turquoise sees itself as a small part of a cosmic web. The key characteristic of turquoise is that it integrates everything it perceives into a holistic field. Turquoise plays with energetic fields and connections. Right, that'll do for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.